Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I've got a fun project for you that I'm super excited to share. This project is the combination of art and fashion, my two favorite things. So this week I'm excited to tell you that we're carving stamps. One of the first things I did was to start looking at photo reference for mid-century modern flowers, florals, because I knew that's the style that I wanted to make this in because it offers big, bold, simple shapes, which I thought would be good for a beginning carving lesson. So I drew in my sketchbook several typical traditional shapes of leaves and flowers and then crossed out the ones I didn't like or modified ones that I did like and came up with several ideas for stems and flowers and even some flowers with shading behind them. So like a, a separate circle stamp of shading behind them. And I looked at different types of leaves and how they would connect to the stem and if the stem got wider at the bottom or if the bottom of the stem got absorbed by the leaf connection. So as I'm sure you figured out by now, math is not my strong suit. However, I did these calculations and I think that this is how we're gonna divide up the six by 11 carving material for the best bang for our buck, considering the sizes and the shapes that I'm trying to create. So based on my sketches, I decided to divide up the six by 11 in the best way so that I could get the most out of it. So we've got six and 11 and I decided I would make two different stems. So I would go over six inches here, divide that in two. So I would have two stems that were three wide and six tall. That would give me two stems. Then over here, I decided this is going to be five inches wide, but rather than divide it evenly, I'm gonna make two squares of three by three. And then out here will be a two inches left and I could either make two at two by three or one big tall vertical one, but I think I'll leave room for a few other things I wanna do with the flowers and divide it here. So these will be two by three. So this is how I'm gonna cut up the pad for the most um, I can get out of this one sheet of carving material. And I do have a little chunk of random carving material that I found uh, here in the studio that I'm going to use uh, for one last uh, simple element um, in addition to the blue. So uh, let's see if we can get everything I want out of here. So this will be two sets of stems, two different styles of stems at three by six, and then I should be able to get one, two flowers out of here. This one, I might do some elements, some little bits and pieces, and then this one, I can do a two by three flower, maybe something more vertical. So before you cut it up, have a plan. So the next important tool is a carving pad. I have a big Mac Daddy one out in my shipping area, but I don't really want to drag it in here to the inside studio. So I got this small one. It's nice and petite and it's the perfect size for carving stamps so that I don't cut my desk in the studio. So these products will all be linked down below the video as usual.
So the next step is to trace up the designs from the sketches at a size that works for the blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my flower uh, pieces that aren't stems and trace them onto the paper so that I have this size. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring the sketchbook back and have a look at what I drew and if it will work in these sizes or if it needs to be modified. So the first flower I'm looking at is this one, so fun. And I really like the way that it's offering me an opportunity to put a dot in the middle and some squiggly lines around here. So it's organic, but it's also got that mid-century modern feeling to it. And luck luckily, it's gonna fit in here pretty well. So I'm just going to flip this up. Now, if it one of the petals is a little long, so I'll bring it in and I'll just make sure it all fits in here. So this petal is a little long, so I'm just going to shorten it a little bit. Now, I'm tracing this rather than drawing it right onto the carving material because when you stamp, it's going to be backwards. You will get the mirror image um, when you stamp it. So here I'm shortening that petal and I've got that circle in the middle. And then just sort of this fun wiggly line that goes around and I can make that up with the carving tool. Okay, so now that fits on my block. But I like this flower facing this way. And this is why I'm gonna transfer it like this because we're going to flip it over on the block and we'll have a mirror image of it. When we flip it over and transfer it to the block, we're gonna be transferring the flipped image of it. So that way when it stamps, it's going to look like this because some things don't look the way you want them to look when they get flipped over backwards. So this is how you're going to do your drawing the way you want it to be. And then it will stamp that way because we're going to flip it over. So let's just try this. I've drawn it with a soft lead pencil. I'm using a 3B, but you can use the softest lead pencil that you have. And then I'm going to line it back up onto the carving material making sure that nothing's going off the edges. And then I'm just gonna use my fingers. I'm using the flat part of my fingernails to burnish the graphite onto the carving material. So I'm gonna hang onto it and lift it up and I can see where I've missed a spot, but I've got plenty of information here. And it's that easy. So my biggest safety tip for this tool is that these nibs are very sharp. What I wanted to say, <laughs> this tool is very sharp. So when you're carving, you want to push the carvings away from your hands. Always rotate the stamp around to push away from you. So the cool thing about these is that uh, the nibs go in here, but the cool thing about this is that they store all the extra nibs in the bottom of the handle. So you don't lose them or misplace them or you don't know, you know, you, you know where they are when you need them. Loosen this up and you find the little groove. And again, be real careful. These tools are sharp. You find the little groove right in here, drop it in, loosen it all the way up, drop the nib in, and then twist to tighten. First thing we're gonna do is take this small nib and go around the line that we drew with the pencil. We have to establish an outline. And you can see I am holding and carving away from myself. What's nice about this material is that it carves so easy. It's not like you're pushing and putting a lot of pressure on it and risking slipping and cutting yourself like you would if you were using a linoleum block or a wood block. So modern stamp carving is much easier than it used to be. And now we're gonna switch to the big nib 
and carve out the negative space. So you use the large nib to carve out the negative space all around your design. And this is kind of therapeutic and fun to do because it's a little bit mindless as long as you make sure to keep carving away from your hands so you don't get cut. It's kind of uh, therapeutic carving out all the negative space with the big scooping nib. So uh, when you um, comment down below, I, I would love to know which is your favorite stamp out of all of the ones that uh, I've carved. Uh, when you see them by the end of the video, I'd love to know which one is your favorite. And I'd also like to know if you have ever carved your own stamps before. Is it something you've ever tried or was even on your radar? Um, because we all buy commercial stamps, but it's kind of fun to, um, to carve your own pattern and, and uh, go through the process. And then sometimes when you go through the process, you go, oh, okay, that was fun. But from here on out, I'm buying stamps. <laughs> so I also want to invite you um, to consider joining my Patreon at this point, because I do really multi-part in-depth tutorials every week in Patreon. Um, it's a month-to-month -month subscription and um, you have immediate access to all previously archived material uh, as soon as you sign up and you're only committed for 30 days at a time. So come join me. Learn something new every week. Okay, so don't get the the shavings um, in messed up with your cutting nibs and randomly accidentally throw your nibs out or cut your fingers. So keep that separate. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. The best way to check to see what you're gonna get is to hit your stamp with an ink pad and print it on paper to see if it's what you want and if it's giving the impression that you want or if you need to carve more away. So we're gonna make a test print. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is take the stamp that we've created and ink it up with, I've got an archival ink pad here by Ranger. And these are great for, um, they're fade proof and permanent. And if you wanna do these on paper, um, the stamps, this is a great way to do it. So I'm gonna transfer some of the ink to the stamp. And I'm really gonna see here now what's carved and what's going to print. But once we ink it all up, then I'm gonna bring back my notebook and I'm gonna do a test print. Now, there is a tool that we can use called a Baron. So when you make a bigger stamp and you have a big surface area of it, the Baron goes and is a big wide circle and you can apply even pressure to a wider area. And here's the print. I love it. Isn't it cool? Look at that. It's adorable. I love all the rough edges on the inside. I could smooth out some of the edges right here. I do like this little leftover print uh, stuff. It makes it look like a little bit of a linoleum or a wood carving. But now that I've got this information, I can come in here and probably clean up and smooth out the edge. Okay, so that was tons of fun. I've made a whole bunch of stamps out of this one carving pad. How cool is that? So now we've got stems and we've got flowers and we've got ovals to go behind the flowers and we've got super cool stems. I'm really excited about how this turned out. It did take a long time, but it was kind of therapeutic, just sort of carving away and kind of, you know, going through the motions of it. So, but I do want to say that it's not for everyone and maybe you might find yourself carving one or two, but then hoping that you had something to uh, add to your collection. So I just want to say that I do have commercially made red vulcanized rubber stamps and they're my designs and they were made by Rubber Moon. And Rubber Moon is now gone to a wholesale format on their website 
for rubber stamps, but um, you can, oh, did I show you my favorite one? That's my favorite one. But you can buy these from my website. I have, because they're my designs, you can buy a um, a pretty good sampling of Rubber Moon, uh, my designs of red vulcanized rubber stamps at paperpaintings.com. tried to clean this up for you so that it would look pristine on the video, but I was only able to appeal about half of the junk off of the brayer. It works just fine, even though it's dirty. It's just aesthetics. Now, we can stamp these stamps on cards or on envelopes or on packaging or on who knows what, but what I want to stamp on today with some bright colored paint is going to be my traveling skirt. So I've already stamped on this skirt. I put uh, Boy Scout numbers on this skirt. I put a fabric coaster from Mexico and some more Boy Scout numbers. So I've got a lot of room here for some more stamps. I've got some flowers that I drew and a lot of embellishing going on here, but I've got a lot more room. And my idea is to put this flowers on the hem at the bottom. So there is a tool called a baron that you can use to put pressure on the tops of the stamps so they get pressed down really well. And I was thinking we might want to use something like that when we start working on the skirt. So since I don't have a baron, I started thinking about what do I have in the kitchen maybe that I could use. And lo and behold, I got an idea. Here in the drawer full of kitchen utensils is the meat pounder. The meat pounder is something that I use most primarily to crush the dog's pills and sprinkle them over. Eggs, eggs. The dog won't take her pills without fresh scrambled eggs and the meat pounded crushed pill sprinkled over the top. So I figure if we're using it to pound flea pills, we can certainly use it as an art supply. Okay, so now comes the moment of truth. We're gonna put some color on the brayer and onto the stamps and see how they work on the skirt. And we've now got our meat pounder slash barren tool. And I think that's gonna help us get real good contact with the skirt. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do these uh, stems first and um, let's put some unexpected color on there. So I'm gonna roll a nice thin layer with the brayer, just trying to touch the tops of this, trying not to get down into the low areas right there. I might have to carve that back out, but um, it's okay. Like I said, nothing's gonna be perfect. So I've got the, the Delusions paint on here because it's acrylic and it's gonna hold up under washing and um, it's a nice thin paint and a thin layer so it'll be flexible and it won't crack. Let's flip this over right here. This is the back of the skirt. I'm uh, doing it in an inconspicuous place. All right. So this paint should hold up well in the wash. Um, it's uh, permanent, light, fast, fade proof, and acrylic, so it will not uh, wash off. I will uh, wash it in cold water inside out, but this is my traveling skirt, and it's got faded elements on it, and it's got bright elements on it, and it's also not perfect, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's see how this transferred onto the fabric. Oh boy, I love it. Look at that. We didn't even need to go inconspicuous with that. Wow, fantastic, fabulous. Wow, wow. Okay, this is better than I even expected. This is awesome. Okay, so I'm so excited. This is so exciting. All right, so while I have this color out, I'm just gonna move over a little bit and give it another stem because my goal is to go all the way around the skirt. So I'm gonna give myself another stem. I'm gonna move over, let's see. Yeah, 
decent amount. Uh, I'm gonna move over to about about a foot, about a foot over, and we'll put it right here. Now, because this is acrylic paint and not ink pad ink, you're going to want to wash it off as soon as you can so that it doesn't affect the surface of the stamp. So that means uh, stopping and um, putting it face down onto wet paper towels out on the side of the desk would have been a good idea for me because it would keep the paint moist, but it's not um, difficult to run it under the sink. Okay, here we go. Another great impression look at that super happy super super happy all right so now it's time to add the flowers to these so let's switch colors and i'm going to add that right at the top of this stem pressing it down with the meat pounder. And I want it to be light because I'm gonna put the flower over the top of it. So the first flower that I'm gonna put over the top of it, well, let's also do one over here while we have the paint color out. So I'm gonna do another one here. Gosh, guys, this is so exciting. Now, when I as I go around the skirt, I'll change the colors of these, I'll change the colors of the circles, and I'll alternate and try to create a lot of variety between my flowers and my stem combos and my color combos. Okay, so there's, that uh, could be a little darker. So I'll print it again. I have to get more paint on that. And I'm also going over a seam right there, which I should be mindful of. I'm gonna to try to set these in the middle of the seams. Okay, it's to do with the seam underneath it uh, that I overlapped, but that's okay, I still like it. All right, so now I'm gonna do, uh, this is a greenish yellow, but I think it's gonna to be too pale for leaves. Um, so I'm going to do my next set of leaves in sort of a, another darker color. So let's go with the teal on this one and see how that looks. So again, I'm using my six by six circular gel plate, put the paint on my brayer in a nice sort of even thick layer. We'll roll it out and let's see, this goes this way. So we'll roll it out onto the leaf stick. So here it is, the finished product 
the fruits of our labor. Look at that. It goes all the way around and I use different color combinations and different stamps alternating a lot of fun and a new life to my travel skirt. So thanks for being here. Thanks for keeping me company. And um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll see you next week. And um, thanks again.